somebody back east to say, why don't she write? <laughs> Hey, Muskie fans. Um, Thanks for joining me today on this third, fourth episode of Muskegon Rising, where I take a look at the uh, season um, for the Muskegon women's soccer team. Um, Do appreciate you joining. I'm Simple Coach, and I'm not sure if you could see her. Jackie is sitting to my left. I apologize for taking so long to come out with this episode. I have this thing called a J-O-B that is not to F-U-N. And so um, they're really not into my YouTube influencing. Who knew? Um, Anyhow, we have a great show for uh, for you today. Um, We're going to take a look at some statistics um, really uh, uh, around comparing last year to this year, just, uh, you know, some goal, you know, the goals, goals for, goals against, uh, just just to provide some interesting context. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the upcoming schedule, get a sense as to what they're facing. We're heading into the OACs right now, so, you know, all bets are off the table at this point. Um. We're also going to have a chance to, I got a chance to sit down with Jill uh, Leposky. Did I say that right? Sorry. Um, Muskegon's CDM and probably one of the most important players on the field had the opportunity to be at Muskegon for the game they played against Worcester and, and was really impressed with her ability to control that that sort of space between the f- defenders and the sort of more forward midfielders. So I, I always think the CDM is probably the most important position on the field, and she she manage that, manages that really well. But before we talk to Jill, um, I wanted to take a look at the schedule that has been played so far take a look at to where they're at and um, hopefully um, maybe see some patterns that um, that we can sort of, you know, look forward to. So anyhow, thanks for joining me on this ride. And here we go. Okay, so let's just take a look at the past nine games and um sort of results and let's do a little bit of a comparison between now and last year which is actually kind of really interesting um so the first game of the season sorry is was washington and jefferson three three tie Probably the more remarkable thing is that um, Muskegon was down 3-1 and managed to claw itself back to the tie. So I think, you know, in my mind, what I was thinking is, oh, out of the gate, you win one. Um, so, you know, but in, under the circumstances, you know, that's a that's a good result. A little bit more disappointing to me was the Olivet game, another a 2-2 tie um, where... I think it was in the last like two minutes. Um, uh, Muskegon gave up the the tying goal, but again, when you when we look historically and look at where they were last year, the the progress is is you is indisputable. Um, they followed up, and I was actually at this game against Worcester, and Worcester is a just a top class program, really well, and and lost. Uh, and Muskegon lost three nothing. I will say the previous le- year they had lost five nothing. So um, progress in in at least defensively. Another tough game that I wasn't expecting. I chalked this up as to one of the one of the games that uh, Muskegon uh, would struggle with, and that's Ohio Wesleyan, another fantastic program. Uh, they then traveled to Hiram, where they sneaked out a 2-1 win. Um, good, solid. First win of the season. That's a really big deal. 
And then they did it again against Bluffton, 4-2, you know, um, getting some goals on, on the board and getting another win. So that's two wins already in six games. Um, just so you know, in 2021, they had for the entire season just two wins. So, um, And then another disappointment I thought was Earlham um, at 0-0, zero, zero, another tie. Um, again, when you go from four goals down to zero, I sort of look at that and be like, something was wrong from a production standpoint. Um, and then, to, you know, this game, again, where I didn't expect anything, I'm glad they got a goal, but playing Case Western Reserve, which is, in my poll, I think they might be seventh in the country. So tough, tough, tough game for Muskegon. Um, they, they, they went and lost uh, 5-1, so. And then finally, another disappointment of the game um, for me, and I sort of expected a better result on this one. I didn't get to watch it uh, as I had a high school game that didn't go so well either, um, was the game against Kenyon uh, where they lost one nothing. So hopefully I can watch and get some a sense of that. So, so what does that mean for for um, for the season so far? Uh, Muskegon stands at two, four, and three going into the conference. Now, when I first looked at the first five games, I thought they could go three and two, and based on sort of what you know, the the first five games put you at Hiram. Um, their actual record was one, two, and two, which isn't bad, right? Like I wasn't, that's, you know, two ties, I'll take two ties and two losses. So they were, you know, sitting good. And then with these extra games, obviously two, four, and three. But if I'm looking at it the way I sort of had framed in my head and the best case scenario I thought that Muskegon would be at would be at two, three, four, four, three, five, five, three, and one, maybe, you know, something like that. That's where I thought the, the best case scenario was. And, um, so anyhow, two, four, and three. Now I had mentioned last year, two victories, the entire season, probably more interesting to me is sort of when you look under the covers, the scores, yeah, don't, some of them don't reflect great, whatever, but in 2021, after nine games, Muskegon's record was one and eight. They scored in those nine games, eight goals, and they allowed 31 goals in, in all of those nine games. So for every goal that Muskegon scored, they allowed four. So usually what you want to see is Either your production and goals go up or your defense get better. And to a certain extent, it's gotten, both have gotten better. And, and so I mentioned 2022, they have a record of two, four, and three after nine games. They have scored 12 goals. So they've increased their goal production by 50%, right? So... Whereas they had eight, now they have 12 after the nine games. Probably more statistically significant in my book is that they have only allowed 20 as opposed to 31. And so if you were to look at it legitimately, right, across all games, for every goal they score, they concede two. And and don't forget, there's probably three games there that, you know, are, you know, the, the Worcester, um, the Worcester, the Ohio Wesleyan, and then the Kenyon game, which represent 11 of those 20 goals. So if you exclude those out, you're, you're looking at in every game Muskegon is in. And you couldn't say the same thing last year by, by any stretch of the means. So progress, right? And that's, that's probably the most important thing. Um, 
sorry about that. Yeah, so, so progress. So what I think that directionally, and, 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 and Jill references it in the interview when, I, when, we, when we get to it, talks about metrics that they're tracking, passes, possession, those things that have gone up significantly. And that would make total sense based on just the numbers. If I've taken away any emotional thought about the games and all that, just the numbers, right? I'm, I'm looking at this and saying something has changed defensively for the team for much better. And then offensively, they're starting to sort of branch out and get, uh, get the type of production that they're going to need. Okay, so that was the first nine games and in, in where Muskegon's at and sort of my impressions of, of how things are going. And, and, and clearly, clearly there's progress being made. And, and I'm just scratching the surface. I mean, there's so much we could do. And I, I know I referenced, you know, passing and possession and that sort of thing and, you know, wins and defensive wins and, and you know, pass completion rates and that sort of thing. Um, that I, I don't I don't have access to. So, but clearly, just from the scoreboard and the and the records and whatnot, um, they are a clear mark distinction from last year. Um, so next up is I uh, had a chance to speak with another remarkable young woman, um, Jill Leposky, who is the. Uh, central defensive midfielder for Muskegon. She's played in all nine games this season. And when I was at Worcester, you could tell, like, she's a very critical piece of uh, Coach Gunderson's um, scheme. And what you end up seeing is that, and she's another example of it, these key positions on the field um, where they can make a difference. And, and, and in Jill's case, she's got, she's got room to to grow. And, um, as a sophomore, she has this year and then junior and senior year. So really it, we're just seeing the beginning of, of her, um, of what she's capable of. So with that, um, um, Jill Leposky. Oh, thank you very much for, for joining me today on this episode of Muskegon Rising. Really intrigued by, by the team, by what you're doing, what I think Coach Gunderson is trying to build. And so your perspective is invaluable to me. So thanks again for taking the time in the midst of, of all of your soccer and your probably heavy load of studies. Um, yeah, yeah, not a problem. Um, so, you know, I always say, why don't you do the heavy lifting? Why don't you introduce yourself? You know, you know, the standard stuff, name, hometown, major, favorite color, or whatever it might be. Okay, so I'm a sophomore. I'm from Wellington, Ohio. I'm an accounting major. I play holding mid for the Muskies, and, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're from where, Ohio? Wellington, Ohio. Wellington, Ohio. Um, where do, where does Wellington lie? About forty five minutes south of Cleveland, so kind of in the Oberlin area. If you know where Oberlin College is. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I went I went to school at one of your rivals, so I I'm, I I know sort of that general area by the schools, pretty much, not by town. So that's um, so okay. All right, so let let's just get straight to it. Maybe from your perspective, do you notice a difference? And what are is that? If if you haven't, that's fine too. Uh, between last year and this year's team, absolutely, yeah. Um, and you can see it in the statistics. Even we were um, after like even the first scrimmage, we were going back and looking at our ball possession as well as passes and like games last year versus games this year and in teams where we were like relatively close I think it was Baldwin Wall as we looked at I'm not sure but even our um ball possession in a game like that last year was worse than our ball possession in a game against Denison this year and that's like a very very good team so even though the result of even that game wasn't maybe what we were hoping for and doesn't look like a lot of progress the possession that we're doing and the passing and just kind of connecting with each other has been a million times better this year. 
-hmm. And I think that's very apparent in our statistics and some of the results we've had just based on like, we played William and Jefferson last year. We played Earlham last year and those were both losses, close games, but we've turned that into a result this year. And I think keep going on that trend. We are definitely seeing improvement. Yeah. I will say I watched the last year's game and this year's game and it's two totally different teams. Mm -hmm. Um, And I will say too, uh, like Worcester was a, that's the game I was at. Um, Great team. And Mm -hmm. right. I mean, you, you held your own in so in a, in a lot of ways. And, you know, I, I appreciated how, yeah, you were trying to control the tempo as best you could. And I thought that was noticeable and that was different from, Last, last year, I thought was a little bit haphazard and, and still trying to find your legs and figure things out. So very noticeable from my standpoint. So so the segue to that is, and it sounds like you're pretty pleased, but how do you think the team has played overall so far in the seven games that you've played? Yeah, and again, I definitely think it's better than last year. I do think that there are areas that we still are improving on and still need to get together before we enter into the OAC, but I think we have plenty of time to work on those things. Um, Last night at Earlham, we had moments where it was really good and a few areas where we kind of like tapered off and against maybe a different team that could have really cost us. So I do think that's something we need to keep focusing on, but overall, I think it's looking really good. Yeah. I, you know, that's funny that you said that because I think Washington and Jefferson was that they punished you at those times. Um, hang on. Sorry. Had another game going. Um, uh, had um, they punished you at times when you were sort of on you were having those moments where you were trying to figure things out. And then I think you just recovered really well. Right. Coming back three one down to three three. But. I do think that's one of those games you grab at some point, right? Like, I think that's a, that's one that you grabbed. All of that game is, is one that you grab as well. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, so to me, I just was looking at some stats. So you're currently two, two and three and correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, because I'm, I can very well be wrong. Um, you have three ties, uh, uh, Washington, Jefferson, all of that and Earlham yesterday. Yeah. Was that Early yes? Earlham was, was yesterday. I before your game, your win against Bluffton, I thought you could be three and two at this point. Um, you're close. Like I said, those there are two of those ties. I didn't think should be ties. I think you should have you should have definitely buried all of that when you had the chance. But I'm not going to blame you. Um, and um, and then you 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 beat Bluffton. You tied Earlham. And so last year, I went back to last year and I'm thinking, hey, you know, progress. What's progress? You were one in six at this time last year, which is pretty darn remarkable. Um, You have another couple games, right? You play Case, which will be a tough one. And then Kenyon, both at home, which is to your advantage. Has there been, has a team talked at all about going into the OACs? Or are you just so focused on the first, on the next game? Yeah, it's mostly that. I think we like to take things one game at a time, kind of focus on like who our next opponent is. I think we definitely have the goal in the back of our minds to make it to the OAC tournament um, this year, as I think Morgan touched on on her interview. But yeah. right now we're kind of focused on Case Western and then following that game will be Kenyon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you, do you feel like there, so I'm, I'm super confident. Like I'm just a generally confident guy. Right. So, so I look at that and I think, man, you made so much progress from year over year. Do you, do you feel a confident? Does the team feel a little bit more confident maybe than last year? Yes, absolutely. I think given that we've played some of the teams we played last year and come out with a different result already, and there were a Mm -hmm. lot of close games last year in the OAC, I think we're feeling pretty good about our ability to compete this year. Yeah, I think, um, right, the, Morgan said the goal is to make the tournament. Is that mm-hmm. still, not that you talk, right, that's one of those that you don't talk about, and except for me. I should not talk about it either, but is that still something that you you think you the team's gunning for? Absolutely. I think that's always the goal. Is I think yeah. that would show a lot of improvement if we were able to make that tournament this year. Yeah. Okay, so I, I don't know. I mentioned this before we started 
recording, which I'm glad, yes, we are recording. Um, <clears throat> like, I, w- I was there um, at the game you played against Worcester. Um, you, you lost uh, 3 nothing. The year Last year, you lost 5 nothing. Um, and I thought there were stretches that you, you held your own, right, as a team. But I think more importantly, I, I didn't know that you – that um, Coach Gunderson was going to recommend you or suggest that I reach out to you for this interview. Mm-hmm. But I noticed you against Worcester because of how, I think, critical role you play um, in – in the team's, I'll say overall defense. I think you're you're pretty key from a defensive standpoint, but also from an attacking standpoint. I thought you got got the ball forward really, really well. Um, now, and I say that not to, well, maybe yeah, to pat you on the back because I like to see good soccer players, but you're only a sophomore. Like, how, how does I mean you? And you carry look in my book. The most important player on the field is is your position is the is the is the is the holding mid um, for all the reasons why I said like how does that feel to be a sophomore and have the responsibility like this on on you I mean is it did you feel it last year do you feel it more this year um, yeah so coming in this is actually a big topic for me because I was actually more of a center back when I came into college. And so mm-hmm. being put in that role, because I played a little bit of mid, like in high school and all that, but, and just like with that pressure, as well as like being a freshman and not really having experienced college soccer before, it was kind of a bit of a transition for me, I think. But this year, I feel like I did some stuff over the summer and I've settled in. And along with just like having, you know, Morgan and Hannah and other really great people in the midfield with me, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. And I feel comfortable in that role. You could see, you could see, and even Worcester isn't the best game, right? Because I think there were times where they, you could just tell that they were just, they're so quick on the ball. They're so good, right? Um, but you could see something working in the midfield, right? Like there was a, I don't, I don't know if you're necessarily there yet, maybe towards the end, but end of the season you will. But there is definitely something there where you're reading each other and knowing, hey, I know if I just pass the ball to my right, Morgan's going to be there. She's going to be making a run down the line. So, um, yeah. So, okay. So, listen, this was fantastic. I told you, nice and easy. Here we are. And um, uh, really do appreciate you taking the time again today. Um, And know that, as I told Morgan, I told Coach Gunderson, I tell everybody on this thing. You have a fan out in New Jersey who's cheering, right? You see, like, didn't notice the hat, did you? Um, so thanks. Thank you again for, for joining me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. So... Why don't we talk a little bit about the upcoming OAC schedule? And um, I'm, I'm going to look in particular at the first four or five games, um, just because that seems to be more relevant than the ones that are on the outliers at the end of the month. So um, next up is, is Heidelberg on Saturday. Um, uh, it is away at Heidelberg. Last year... Muskegon lost 2-1. Um, this year, listen, this is a game. This is a game to be to be got, right? They, I, I fully expect them to get something out of it, whether it's a tie or a, or a win. Um, again, and I'm just looking at goal production, and you know, the 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 they're making it a lot more difficult for teams to score. So. Uh, at following that on Wednesday, Marietta away. Last year they lost to Marietta two uh, nothing. Same thing. I am looking for a tire or a win here. So, um, and I think it's again another game to be got. Following that is Otterbein. Uh, I think that's the following Wednesday. I think it's like a Saturday Wednesday. Um, last year, just like Marietta, they lost uh, two nothing. Um, but they have Otterbein at home. Another game I'm looking for a result. Um, 
Again, tie or win. These are these are the games that for for Muskegon to make that next step, right? Like these are the games that they got they got to earn, and they gotta and they gotta they gotta make happen. The next game, Capital, which is an outstanding women's program, um, is on the twelfth. They lost last year seven nothing. I'm not expecting a result. What I am expecting is a much stiffer defense and not allowing capital so many so many goals. So I mean if they I, I fully expect them to compete to win. Don't get me wrong. Um, that's the way you approach every game. Like we're gonna win it. Um, but I would I would look for um, I would definitely look to shore up defensively. So, and however that's reflected in the in the game, I would expect it not to be as lopsided. So, after that, it's away at Baldwin Wallace, followed by my alma mater, Mount Union, um, away at Ohio Northern, and away at Wilmington, and ending with John Carroll. And I'll take a look at those those particular games in next up. So, if I was a betting man. Um, in the next episode. So in, in if I was a betting man, I would, of those four games, I'm going to be ambitious. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say 2-1-1 one, one is what, is what the objective should be. So give some wiggle room. But going 2-1-1 one, one to face Baldwin Wallace and then Mount Union and Ohio Northern, a tough, tough stretch of their OAC schedule, I don't think is unrealistic. And hey, if they come out three and one on this, like that would be fantastic. What I'm definitely looking them to do in this these four games is to um, is to get more wins this season than they had last. So um, just by the nature of playing four more games, so um, full confidence in that. And yeah. Okay, so that about does it for this episode of Muskegon Rising. Really appreciative of your support, and hopefully if you liked it enough, you will, you know, as my CMO says, you know, you're supposed to hit a like button or smash a like button, subscribe, and do something about the bell. Um, Any support would be appreciative. I do have to say, want to thank Jill Leposky for her time and her insight. She's a fantastic ball player, and I do enjoy uh, enjoy watching her play. Um, hopefully, um, I hope maybe before the end of the month, I'll be able to get back out there and, and check out a game. I uh, would love to be there um, for a victory. That would be that would be fantastic. So. Um, shout out to all the girls and wishing you all the best in the upcoming, uh, four or five games. And I'll check back with y'all in, um, you know, in a couple weeks again with another episode and sort of on this final stretch of the OAC and seeing where, where the team is. So again, thanks, blessings, and, uh, hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day.